The smell of freshly brewed kawa wafted through the apartment, mingling with the aroma of fuel and tamiya sizzling in the kitchen. Amira glanced at the clock, hurriedly buttering some balati bread for Yusef, who was playing with his toy truck on the living room floor. Yusef, Habibi, come eat, she called out. The little boy abandoned his truck and scrambled onto his chair, his eyes lighting up at the sight of his breakfast. As the gentle hum of Cairo's morning bustled outside, Amira savored the few moments of peace, the soft adhan adding a rhythmic cadence to the backdrop. There was a soft knock on the door, and when Amira opened it, she found Faiza standing there, her eyes sparkling with mischief. The older woman was dressed in a bright floral hijab and carried a woven bag slung over her shoulder. Sabah el Kair, Amira, she greeted, kissing her on both cheeks. Sabah el Nur, Mama Faiza, Amira replied, ushering her inside. Faiza bent down to scoop up Yusef, showering him with kisses. How's my little prince today? Yusef giggled. Mama Faiza, play. Amira smiled. He missed you. Faiza's gaze lingered on Yusef. How about I take him out for a stroll? It's such a lovely day. You can get some rest or finish up your chores. Amira hesitated, glancing at the dishes piling up in the sink. Just an hour? Faiza nodded, winking. Promise. We'll just walk around the block. After a slight nod from Amira, Faiza's face lit up. Come on, my prince. Let's go on an adventure. Amira's phone buzzed with a call notification. Layla's face flashed on the screen, her infectious smile evident even in the picture. Hey, stranger. Layla's voice rang out when Amira answered. Layla, how have you been? A few minutes of banter later, Layla was at Amira's doorstep, her hands full with a box of pastries and a thermos filled with tea. Amira laughed. Always the savior. I just ran out of tea. Layla shrugged, pouring the tea into two cups. Just call me the tea fairy. They settled onto the balcony, the cacophony of Cairo below them. They sipped tea and exchanged stories about motherhood, work, and the ever-present Cairo traffic. Oh, by the way, Layla began. I saw Mama Faiza with Yusef near the marketplace. She was buying him some sweets, I think. Amira sighed. She's spoiling him rotten. I told her not to feed him too much sugar. Layla shrugged. That's what grandmothers do. Anyway, I'm sure it's harmless. The sun had started to dip, casting long shadows across the narrow streets of Cairo when Faiza returned. She looked slightly frazzled, and Yusef clung to her tightly. Amira rushed forward, taking Yusef in her arms. Is everything okay? You took longer than I expected. Faiza waved away her concerns. Just lost track of time. Cairo has that effect. Amira noticed Yusef's silence, his eyes red-rimmed as if he had been crying. What happened? Faiza quickly interjected. Oh, he just got a little scared by a street dog, but it's fine now. He's okay. Amira hugged Yusef close. It's okay, Habibi. You're home now. The child clung to her, burying his face in her shoulder, his small body trembling. Faiza's eyes darted away. I should leave. It's getting late. As the door clicked shut behind Faiza, Amira felt a pang of unease. Something wasn't right. She could feel it. Khan El Khalili's labyrinthine alleys buzzed with life, as tourists haggled with shopkeepers over shiny souvenirs and locals went about their daily shopping. Amira and Layla weaved through the crowded aisles, pausing occasionally to inspect a scarf or sip on some cold hibiscus juice. You've been quiet, Amira remarked, studying a silver anklet. Everything okay? Layla hesitated, glancing around. Remember I mentioned seeing Mama Faiza and Yusef near the marketplace? Yeah, Amira replied, eyebrows knitted. Layla gulped. Well, I saw them again, but not shopping. Amira's eyes met Layla's, sensing the unease. What is it? Layla bit her lip. I saw her, begging, with Yusef in her arms, using him. Amira's heart dropped. You're sure? Layla nodded gravely. At first I thought I was mistaken, but today, there's no doubt. The sun had set by the time Amira reached her apartment building. Taking a deep breath, she knocked on Faiza's door. The older woman opened the door, her eyes red-rimmed. Amira, this is unexpected. We need to talk, Amira began, voice shaking. About Yusef, Faiza frowned. What about him? Amira exhaled slowly. Layla saw you, at the market, begging. Faiza's face contorted. That's preposterous. Layla's lying. I trust Layla, Amira shot back. 
and something's been off. Yusef's been distant, afraid. Why? You're accusing me? Faiza's voice rose, her demeanor shifting from surprise to agitation. After everything I've done for this family? Amira clenched her fists. I want the truth. Faiza's erratic behavior only deepened Amira's suspicions. The older woman seemed to shrink, her voice dropping to a whisper. It wasn't like that. Amira lay in bed that night, Yusef's soft snores the only sound. She had decided. She'd find out the truth herself. The next morning, as Faiza picked up Yusef for their usual stroll, Amira trailed them from a distance. As they turned a corner, Amira saw Faiza settle down on a worn-out mat, Yusef on her lap, a sign by their side. Tears streamed down Amira's face as she watched strangers drop coins, their faces full of pity. Faiza's eyes remained downcast, Yusef's little face peering out from her embrace, confused and afraid. Amira approached them swiftly, her anger evident. What is this, Faiza? Faiza looked up, her face a mix of guilt and fear. Yusef, spotting his mother, broke free from Faiza and ran towards her. Cradling Yusef, Amira's voice was cold. You used my son. Why? Faiza's voice trembled. I needed the money. Ever since Hassan left, it's been tough. That's no excuse, Amira shouted. Faiza sobbed. You don't understand. The shame, the fear of losing everything. I thought... I thought Yusef could help. Amira's eyes hardened. You've lost our trust. Faiza's pleas fell on deaf ears as Amira, holding Yusef close, walked away. She needed to dig deeper into the web of lies and discover the truth behind Faiza's actions. Amira knocked tentatively on the door of a simple yet well-kept apartment. Nadia, Faiza's older sister, answered. Her resemblance to Faiza was unmistakable, yet her eyes held a warmth and wisdom that seemed to have escaped her sister. Ah, Amira, Nadia greeted with a faint smile. Come in. The interior was modest, adorned with trinkets and memories of times gone by. Amira took a seat, her nerves evident. I assume you're here about Faiza, Nadia began, pouring tea. Amira nodded. Something's wrong with her, Nadia. She's been using Yusef to beg on the streets. Nadia's face paled. Oh, dear. I need to understand, Amira pleaded. Nadia sighed deeply. Years ago, before you came into our lives, Faiza had a daughter. Her name was Rania. She was... everything to her. Amira listened intently. Nadia's voice cracked. Rania died suddenly when she was just three. Faiza, she was never the same. She spiraled, and her mind... It betrayed her. Amira's eyes welled up. Why didn't anyone tell me? Nadia shook her head. It's a pain she's tried to bury. But some wounds. They never heal. The sun was setting, casting a golden hue over Cairo's skyline. Amira and Layla sat in Amira's living room, surrounded by old photos and dusty journals. This one's from when Faiza was in her twenties, Layla remarked, holding up a black and white photo. Look at her eyes, so full of life. Amira nodded, her finger tracing the young Faiza's features. What went wrong? Layla flipped through a journal, her expression serious. Listen to this. The doctor says it's a condition, my mind playing tricks. But how can I trust it when every shadow mocks me, when the silence is too loud? Amira swallowed hard. She knew? Layla nodded. But there's more. Mama says it's a test from God, that I should pray harder, that medicine is for the weak. Layla closed the journal. She was diagnosed, Amira, but never treated. The gravity of the situation weighed on Amira. All these years, she suffered alone. Layla squeezed Amira's hand. The society, it failed her. It fails so many. The two women sat on Amira's balcony, the gentle hum of the city below them. Layla sipped her tea. This is not just Faiza's story. It's the story of countless women. Amira leaned back. Silent sufferers, constrained by societal norms. Layla nodded. Mental health is such a taboo, especially for the older generation. They're told to be strong, to pray, to endure. Amira's voice held a mix of anger and sadness. And so they hide their pain, bear their burdens in silence, alone. Layla sighed. It's not just Egypt, you know. It's everywhere. But here, the weight of tradition, of expectations, it's stifling. Amira thoughtfully said, We need to break the cycle. For our children. For Yusef. Layla smiled. Change starts with us. By talking, by understanding. 
Amira gazed at the city lights. We need to create a world where the echoes of old don't silence the needs of the new. The room was thick with tension. Faiza sat nervously on one end of the room, her eyes darting around as Amira began, Faiza, you don't need to hide anymore. Faiza fidgeted. I don't know what you're talking about. Laying out the journals and photos, Amira took a deep breath. I spoke to Nadia. I know about Rania. A tear slipped from Faiza's eye. I never wanted you to know. It's a pain that never leaves, Amira. Amira reached out. But using Yusef? Why? A broken sob escaped Faiza. I lost my Rania. Every time I see Yusef, that fear resurfaces. I know it's irrational, but in my mind, if people pity us, they'll protect us. It's twisted, I know. Amira's eyes glistened. We need to heal. Together. Late one evening, Amira's husband, Same, sat with her and Layla, discussing Faiza's situation. We can't turn our backs. We need to get her help, he urged. Layla added, There are new clinics now, specialized for this. We should look into them. Amira nodded. Tomorrow, we'll take her. She shouldn't carry this burden alone any longer. Sama agreed. We're her family. We'll stand by her, no matter what. Amira sat Faiza down, determination clear on her face. I need to set something straight. For Yusef's sake and yours. Faiza tensed, bracing herself. I want to support your recovery, Amira said. But there have to be boundaries. Until you're better, no unsupervised visits with Yusef. Tears welled up in Faiza's eyes. You're taking him away from me? Amira sighed. No, I'm protecting both of you. You need to focus on your healing, and Yusef needs stability. Faiza nodded slowly, the weight of her actions settling in. I understand. Amira stood with Yusef by the Nile, the water shimmering beneath the golden Cairo sun. Yusef giggled, pointing at the boats. This river has seen everything, Yusef, Amira whispered. Joy, pain, life, death. And through it all, it flows resilient and unyielding. Layla joined them, her own son in tow. You've come a long way, Amira. Amira smiled. It's not just my journey. It's every woman's, every mother's. We have to rewrite our stories, for ourselves and our children. Layla added, and shed light on the shadows that society prefers to ignore. The two women, with their sons, watched as the Nile continued its eternal journey reflecting their hopes for a better, more understanding world. Six months had passed. The sun cast a warm, inviting glow over Cairo. Amira sat in her living room, sipping her tea when there was a knock. Opening the door, she found Faiza, a picture of renewed health and vitality. Ready for our walk, Habibti? Faiza's voice carried a lightness Amira hadn't heard in a long time. Yusef ran excitedly to his grandmother. Teta! he exclaimed. Faiza laughed, her eyes sparkling. Ah, my little lion, ready for an adventure? In a bustling cafe, Layla and Amira caught up. She seems so different, Layla noted. Amira smiled. The therapy, the medications, the support group, it's all made a world of difference. Layla observed. It's not just that. She feels loved, understood. It's transformative. Amira sighed. It's a reminder, isn't it? Every soul is capable of healing, of change. Faiza and Yusef strolled through Alajar Park. The world seemed to buzz with life around them. Little children playing, families picnicking, and couples whispering sweet nothings. Holding a balloon, Yusef looked up at his grandmother. Teta, you happy? She bent down, hugging him close. Yes, Yusef. Very, very happy. Back at Amira's apartment, the family gathered for dinner. The room echoed with laughter the scent of Koshari filling the air. Amira looked around, her heart full. It feels like we've been given a second chance. Faiza, her eyes moist, nodded. All thanks to you, Amira. You didn't give up on me. Amira shook her head. No, we didn't give up on each other. And look where it's gotten us. Faiza held Yusef's hand. A new page, filled with hope. The story of Amira, Faiza, and Yusef has reached its conclusion— in your opinion, do societal expectations sometimes prevent us from seeking help or understanding mental health challenges? Have you, or someone you know, faced a similar dilemma? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this Middle Eastern tale, please give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our Emmaus, Middle Eastern Stories channel for more thought-provoking narratives.